Hello, familia. Welcome to another YouTube video. Today, we're going to be talking about how heavy we should go when we're lifting because it's a question that I get all the time from you. You always ask me, Chiara, how heavy should I go? And the answer is it depends on a number of factors. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about all of them and help you understand how heavy you should lift. Now, before we start, as always, familiar, please like and subscribe because it really helps me and it doesn't cost you anything, so please do it and I really appreciate it. So, the first thing I want you to know is to first of all figure out whether you're a beginner, you're an advanced or an intermediate lifter. This will determine how heavy you should lift. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold, by the way, so don't mind me. Um, if you're a beginner lifter, you don't want to go too heavy. Now, a lot of people might think that they will look at other people at the gym, especially when they first started going to the gym, they look at people lifting big weights and instantly think, oh, that's what I need to do in order to grow your bunda or your arms or whatever you want to grow, right? Wrong. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. It's not about how heavy you go. It's all about the form. If you're a beginner, and you pack on a lot of weight and you go straight into, let's say, a squat, but you're still not sure how you perform it, how to tie you're performing it, and you're performing it wrong, what will happen is, first of all, you'll feel like you, you won't like it. You feel like something is paining you, or maybe your knees are paining you, your lower back is paining you, or anything else that it shouldn't. This is because it's gonna compromise your form a lot. It's really important that first you focus on performing the exercise right and you learn all the basics and then you add weight. So the answer for beginners, <clears throat> the first answer that I'm going to give for beginners, if you're someone that's never touched single weight before, you never may, mainly come to the gym or maybe even someone that's had a long break from training, you should start from either no weight no weight if you're a beginner, completely a beginner, you don't know anything about the gym or how to work out. Or if you had a long break from training, you need to start from light weight, just because your body will not be used to a certain stimulus anymore. So you need to make sure you build it back up again if you had a break. Or if you're a beginner, you need to slowly build it up gradually, okay? You can pack on a lot of weight if you don't know how to lift it correctly just yet. <coughs> I'm a living gem. I'm a living gem. I'm so ill. <coughs> I'm dying. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I can't go out tonight. Right. Enough now. Let's go back into the video. So what we're saying, the second point was um, it depends on your goal. Um, however you're lifting, it also depends on what you're trying to achieve. Just because if you're packing on, if you, let's say you're an advanced lifter even, and you can lift quite a bit of weight already, <clears throat> or even intermediate, you can lift something that feels heavy for you, okay? It doesn't, there is not such thing as, <laughs> there's not such thing as me giving you a number and saying to you that's heavy, because how heavy a, a weight is depends entirely, up, is entirely up to you, because every single person is different, right? Every single person can find something heavy, heavier than another. It just, it's completely entirely to every single individual and every, um, and every strength that we've got, right? Because, uh, for example, for me, I can think that 100 kilo squats are quite heavy, but <clears throat> another person, maybe a bodybuilder, might say 100 kilos actually is not that heavy for me. Or even another girl might think, that's not even heavy at all for me, okay? So every single person has got different different levels of and um, different perspe perceptions of strength, okay? So it's never gonna be the same for anyone. Now, um, in terms of, now let's say that you're lifting a really heavy weight. Let's just imagine um, us doing a deadlift, okay? I'm doing a deadlift, I'm picking it up from the floor and it's really heavy for me. Because it's so heavy, I can only do between one to three, maybe five reps because we're picking it up and it's really, really heavy, okay? <clears throat> when we pick something that is so heavy, we can only manage to do three to five reps. We're not training for hypertrophy, AKA we're not training for bunda gains. We're not making any gains there. We're only working on our strength, okay? On developing our strength. You're not 
working on growing your muscles when you lift so heavy that you can only do a few reps, okay? In terms of um, scientifically speaking as well, everything is completely different as well. What your body uses, for example, uses even a completely different type of energy. Um, it's called creating phosphate. Um, when you lift, for example, one rep max, you need an instant burst of energy. So when you consume things like creatine, can really help you because it's a supplement. So creatine is already found in our body, right? And this gets released <coughs> when we do an instant burst of energy. So for example, if we are lifting something really heavy for one, two or three reps, okay? So something really short and really high intensity. Um, but if we supplement it, for example, with creatine, um, I use mine from EHP Labs, by the way, shower at 10 as a discount code, um, you basically help your body to squeeze maybe an extra little um, rep, okay? Now, um, in order to grow your glutes, or any other muscle, in fact, you need to be able to at least um, do between eight to 10 reps. Okay, actually 10 reps plus as well. So the cap, I would say you should be able to do at least eight reps. But if the weight that you're lifting is so heavy that you can't even get to eight good reps, okay? We're not talking about sketchy reps, okay? Because sometimes people pack, up, pack on a lot of weight, but they can't even achieve full range of motion. Or for example, they can't lift it properly. The form is so off that you can even injure yourself. So lifting a weight just for the sake of it or just for ego lifting is not a thing, okay? You can injure yourself and that is important because that will keep you away from training for a long time if you end up getting so injured. So just put your ego aside and focus on the form, on feeling the exercise as well, because you'll notice as well, if you lift really, really heavy, sometimes you won't even feel the exercise in your glutes. So for example, myself, <coughs> when I do a squat, a really heavy squat, um, I notice straight away that I can almost feel it in my glutes as much because anatomically speaking, when you're lifting so, so heavy, automatically your body, your quads, for example, and your hamstrings will tend to take over even more. And of course, when you're talking about squats, they'll take over anyway, um, and they'll participate anyway during an exercise because obviously it's a compound movement. So glutes, hamstrings, and quads, they're all taking part during a squat. But when you're going so heavy, um, your quads and hamstrings will tend to take over and help a lot because it's sending kind of a sort of message to your brain and saying, wait, this weight is so, so heavy for me, so I need help. So your glutes will say, it. quads and hamstrings, come and help me now, okay? So it's really important to understand that. And that's why you can only perform just a couple of reps. But remember, rule is two to three or five reps for working on your strength not on growing your glutes or any other muscle. Eight reps plus, that is working towards your growth, okay? So the next question that you could ask is, okay, Chiara, so does it mean that I never have to push um, to lift heavier? How does it work then? Progressive overload. This is a, a principle that we always mention and I always talk about every single video and you'll, you'll have heard this so much you need to achieve progressive overload in order to achieve growth, right? So I can understand that you can get a little bit confused at this point because you think, okay, so if I don't have to lift heavy to achieve growth, and you say that I have to get a weight that can lift at least eight reps, so how, why do, you, how do I have to go heavy? How, why do I not stick to the same weight? Just because progressive overload is not just in terms of weight, okay? It just doesn't happen in terms of weight. We have to consider a number of things, okay? Training is, uh, happens, and growth specifically, happens um, over a certain amount of time. It doesn't happen straight away. If you come to me and you ask me, Chiara, I wanna build a glute, my glutes in like a month, I'm gonna say that's impossible. If you, it's a sustainable process, okay? It's not a race, it's a marathon. And I'm gonna explain to you why now, in a minute. Okay, so the way you do this, so you want to approach um, progressive overload in general, is by, let's say you decide to go heavier <clears throat> one week, you want to push for 
PB, personal best, okay, it means that you want to put a pack on a little bit more weight, okay. Um, and the first few reps, obviously you can only perform maybe two, three reps maximum, maybe not even three, let's say two reps. Obviously here you're working for strength, we said, right? Cool. What you want to do, what I want you to do is to keep doing that set over a certain amount of weeks, okay? So, this week you managed to do three sets of that weight that was really heavy. But if you keep doing it over the certain weeks, in four weeks time, instead of three reps, you'll be able to do four or five. In a certain amount of weeks of that rep, you could you'll be able to do maybe six, okay? You see how you're progressing up, okay? So you start with only being able to do a certain amount of reps, and then over the next few weeks, you don't have to keep packing on weight, you stick to that weight, okay? But you just perform more reps, and that is also progressive overload because in a few weeks, maybe in a few months, you'll be able to do eight reps of that initial weight. And there you go. That is growth and that is transformed into growth and that is progressive overload. Let me know in the comments if this concept is clear or not because I understand it can be a little bit more complicated but obviously I'm trying to explain it as simply as I can. But essentially, when you're first lifting a really heavy weight, you won't be able to do a lot of reps. And another thing, you won't be able to have perfect form. Obviously, I want you to keep your form as correct as possible, but the first few times that you're practicing, it won't be perfect. But I'm talking about the range of motion. I'll excuse you to have a bit of a sketchy form if the range of motion maybe is a bit not as deep for example, when you're doing a squat, maybe you don't go all the way down, but you stop, for example, half to halfway, that's fine. But if that weight causes you to cave your knees, to round your spine, we're talking about anatomy here, and it's putting a lot of stress to your joints, then it's when I want you to stop, okay? So there are certain things that I allow you to do in your training, but others are not allowed, okay? If when you're squatting, you can't even keep your knees out, okay, that is really bad because what will happen is when you keep squatting and your knees are not aligned with your toes, you might hurt your hips, you might hurt your knees and you might keep you out of training for a long, long time, okay. So that is when I want you not to do that weight, to lower the weight, maybe even possibly start with no weight at all if you're a beginner. <laughs> honestly guys, I'm so ill and I'm honestly, I'm sacrificing my voice for you today. Honestly, if you don't like and subscribe, I'm going to send loads of gems your way, <laughs> okay? You better like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, so um, next thing, when we're lifting heavy, we need to make sure we stretch. And I know that this is something that you've heard so much, and I've heard it so much myself. And before I didn't used to do it, I used to be brave and say, that's fine, I don't need to stretch, I'm still lifting 200 kilos and doing all my heavy lifts. You know, until a few weeks ago, I hurt my hips. And not because I was doing bad form, just simply because your joints will get stiffer as you're lifting so heavy. Um, so it's important you kind of work on wear and tear and like your mobility is so important and I've just only realized when I got burned um, basically obviously not actually burned but you know what I mean when I started experiencing some stiffness around my hips because I wasn't taking the time of the day um, to stretch at the beginning and after my workouts and I know they can sound like so painful and you're just like yeah but it doesn't really matter it does matter because I can assure you now um, that since I started stretching my hips have felt a lot better but because I wasn't stretching before and I had a bit of a stiffness, stiffness, stiffness around my hips now I need to be a little bit more careful with lifting heavy with my squats and I haven't been able to squat heavy actually for three weeks now because of this because of being silly okay so please it doesn't matter how much time you've got left make the time to stretch at the beginning and after your session it doesn't have to be anything fancy it literally takes five minutes and I'm gonna show you what I do 
at the moment that has really helped me as well. <clears throat> so at the beginning of your sessions, you have to do something called dynamic stretching, okay? Dynamic stretches can only be performed at the beginning. Don't you dare and do static stretches. Static stretches is things like this, for example, that you hold the muscle in a position or like this things, like hold it at the beginning of your training, never. You do this at the end. At the beginning, exclusively dynamic stretching, okay? Never do static ones at the beginning. So, usually things that help me stretch my hips um, and help me with my hips and ankle mobility as well. Because when you're squatting, for example, these are the main joints that you'll be using, your hips and your ankles. So, just very nice and simple. I usually do this with a kettlebell as well. <coughs> On each side, you grab a plate or a kettlebell, facing uh, the foot facing the opposite direction, okay? And what I want you to do is to shift your body weight to the side. So facing the front, so your torso needs to face the front, your knee to the side, and shift your body weight towards your bent leg, okay? All the way down. Can you really feel it around your groin area, hip area? You hold, you want your knees to slightly go past your toes. And if this feels <coughs> too uncomfortable for you, maybe bring it, <coughs> bring the foot a little bit closer to you because you will feel, I'm dying, I'm literally dying. Uh, bring the, the foot a little bit closer to you so it will feel easier in case you don't have a lot of mobility. Okay, you do this, hold, get those knees past your toes and come back. Very nice and simple and same thing with the other leg. Very important, please do not skip this. Do not end up like me. <laughs> oh, I'm a bit stiff on this side as well. I can really, really feel this. Crying on the inside. Ah, okay, I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer because this hip is a little bit stiffer. <coughs> okay. Perfect. So, instead, now for my ankles, very nice and simple. I'm gonna grab <coughs> a plate. and you're gonna get into a deep squat position. Now, I'm gonna explain this first without the weight so that you can see what I'm doing. So you get into a deep squat position, like that, okay? You'll be holding the plate with your hands, okay? Like you're driving. And I want you to shift your whole body weight to one side. Your foot needs to be, all the time, stuck to the floor. I don't want you to lift it up. Try to keep your foot planted on the floor the whole time. Okay, you shift to one side, you'll feel a deep stretch on your calf, okay? But you're also stretching your ankles. For one side, hold for three seconds, come back and do the same. Okay, basically twisting here and come back. Now, I'm gonna do it with the weight. <coughs> down, you feel a deep stretch in your calf, on the other side, I want you to do this three times, holding three seconds on each side, okay? So nice and simple, this is what you do at the beginning, if you wanted to do something at the end, which is something I recommend. Um, really good stretch for your hips is like the little frog. So you basically get into this is like a very weird position, by the way. <laughs> this will help stretch your hips. Okay. Sometimes, if you're a little bit more flexible, you can also push it back, which will hurt even more. <laughs> um, but then. So this is dynamic, uh, this is, sorry, static stretches. These are things that you do at the end, 
okay? Not at the beginning, remember that. Um, then, for example, if you train your legs, you want to do some pigeon pose. So, for example, leg in front of you. And then you just lay down, okay? Stretching your glutes. And you hold and press this towards you. You want to pull your leg towards you and hold there for 30 to 60 seconds. So, don't forget to stretch. Whether you're a beginner, advanced, intermediate, whatever you call, okay? Whatever you call yourself. It's really, really important you take the time to stretch at the beginning and after your session. Please don't forget that. On to the next little tip. So, just came to this squat rack now to quickly demonstrate um, what I meant before about the full range of motion and when to go heavy and when your form can go a little bit sketchy, okay? But uh, it's okay to go sketchy. But the difference between having a bit of uh, difficulty with the range of motion or your or damaging your knees and that's something that we need to understand that's why i'm going to demonstrate it to you now so scrubbing the weight yeah obviously this is not too heavy for me right it's not really heavy for me but i'm just demonstrating for your purpose okay so me not going full range of motion because the weight is heavy so for example stopping here it's fine it's okay even a little bit closer of course we know that it's not full of range of motion okay we know that however if the weight is so heavy then it's causing you to have your knees tremble or to bend your back and have your spine wobbling a lot then it's something that i don't want you to do if it's something about your range of motion again going just a little bit lower but not too low ideally you want to work on your range of motion all the time and just achieve full depth, okay? Then it's fine. But if it's something that affects your joints, they might probably affect your hips or your ankles or your knees, then I don't want you to risk it, okay? If it's about the range of motion, like I showed you before, then it's fine. Keep the weight and over time, keep working on perfecting the form rather than keep adding on weight. Now, let's say instead, you are comfortable with the weight that you're lifting. You can keep great form, you can keep great sets, start, but you kind of want to add weight, but you don't really feel comfortable lifting a lot of weight on your own. First tip, I told you this before, use the safety bars, okay? These are here to help you in case you fail and the weight drops, they can help you. So what I normally do when I'm lifting heavy on my own, I would lift this, Okay, and I'll place it quite high. So from here to here. Okay, same thing with the other one. Let's say that this is too heavy, pretending, okay? And let's say I can't come back up, I'm stuck. So I leave it there. Woo! <laughs> I leave it there and I'm fine, okay? But for example, if you don't have the bars instead you just kind of screwed you like have no one to help you but at least you can leave the bar and then you can obviously unwrap the weight and put the bar where it was before okay so that's another tip and again guys let me just put this back up a great way to count in as progressive overload is to add little plates to your current weight show you what I mean so these little plates, although they might seem like baby weights, they are baby weights, they're 2.5s, okay? But if I add them on each side, they make up for an extra 5 kg, okay? So, and that is an easy way to progress up with your weight, okay? So I will do this probably every two, three weeks. I would add 2.5 because it's not a massive change, a massive step up. But at the same time, it will help. Another question a lot of people might ask is, how often should you increase the weight? Again, the answer is, it depends. I can't give you a generic answer just because I don't know what your body looks like or what your body, not looks like, but what your body, body is capable of. 
okay? You might be ready to go heavier, but at the same time, you might not. The only way to try it and test it is by doing it, okay? <coughs> so every so often, <laughs> sorry again, every so often, I will try add more weight and see if simply if I can lift it. I'll probably do every two to three weeks, okay? I'll try and add a little bit more weight. I always start with 2.5 first because it's just easier to add, okay? If you feel like if you can go and push for more, feel free to add more weight, but this is a great tip actually to add 2.5 on each side because it looks like you will feel like it's nothing, but honestly, you're still going up in weight, so that's amazing. Um, so yeah, it's about testing it, to see if you can do it. If you fail it, you feel like you can't lift the weight, then it means that you're not, you're not just yet just ready to add more weight. If you can, perfect. Aim for a couple of reps first, aim at perfecting the form over time, and then slowly but surely, you'll keep increasing weight over and over, and over a long period of time in terms of figuring out what kind of foods you should be eating and what kind of training and how often you should be increasing weight. If you want someone to guide you with that, I offer one-to-one -one online coaching, okay? Link in the description below, so make sure you inquire through the website. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed um, and you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe as always, and I will see you very soon with another video.